Hello, this is Chris Minnick with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you smarter CSS builds with Webpack. This video was inspired by a blog post by Ben Smithett, which is available at the URL shown here. Savvy CSS developers no longer write CSS in one big file. Instead, we're writing small, isolated modules in separate files, as shown in this sample style sheet's directory structure. When it comes to building a single bundle.css file to send to users, you're probably manually specifying all of the individual files that you know your app needs. If you use a preprocessor like SAS, you might be using the at import statement, like this. If you're using Rails or Middleman, you might be using Sprocket's required directives, like this. Or you might roll your own asset pipeline using Gulp or Grunt, like this. Each of these approaches requires you to know which bits of CSS your app actually uses, and you're tediously maintaining a list of dependencies in a manifest file or importing entire directories. The result is that you're potentially including CSS that isn't actually required by the app. You only discover and remove unused CSS by occasionally searching your project's HTML templates for a class name or using a tool to do it. If you're generating HTML from module views written in JavaScript, there's a better way. Webpack is a module bundling Swiss Army knife. It's all about letting you write module UI code with explicitly declared dependencies. You've probably used CommonJS modules before, like this. CommonJS modules synchronously load dependencies, which is fine for Node.js, but it doesn't work very well in browsers because network requires are asynchronous. To run our module code in browsers, we need a module bundler, like Webpack or Browserify, to bundle up all of our dependencies into a single JavaScript file. However, user interfaces aren't just JavaScript. UI components can also depend on images, fonts, and CSS. Webpack recognizes that and supercharges the require function so you can explicitly require all of your dependencies, not just the JavaScript ones. For example, so let's go back to the original problem of how you can generate a single bundle.css programmatically based on the CSS your HTML actually needs. All you need to do is explicitly require each view's own CSS or SAS dependencies like you would its JS dependencies, and Webpack will build a bundle that includes everything you need, performing any extra pre- or post-processing steps as required. For example, given this entry point into our app, which requires these components, which in turn require their own SAS dependencies, Webpack will generate a CSS bundle that looks something like this. The main caveat to this approach is that you don't have any real control over the generated order of your CSS. Webpack will follow calls to require in the order that you specify them, appending to the generated CSS bundle as it goes. When you can't rely on manual ordering of classes, you need to be more disciplined about how you use them, which is a good practice anyway. Another thing to be aware of with the Webpack approach is that each SAS file is compiled in isolation. The result is that there's no global shared context. You just need to import dependencies like variables and mixins whenever you use them. Small isolated files with explicitly declared dependencies are a very good thing. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks again to Ben for the inspiration. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to web development.